Hello and welcome to another episode of the Red Faces Podcast. Now, I want to be real with you, okay? First off, who you have, who are we listening to right now? It's Martin, okay? I know a lot of you guys get confused. It's Martin right now on the microphone. I just want to come clean to you guys, okay? So, basically, what had happened was I f***ed up. So, I was doing my kind of like spring cleaning that I do every couple months. Um, just every random uh, document or, or whatever I had saved on my laptop that I throw on my desktop. I try to organize it and all that, all that good stuff. And I maybe accidentally somehow, possibly, who knows how, magically deleted my desktop, my entire desktop, which had the episode that we recorded that was supposed to premiere today. And now it's gone. Um, so I have to do this by myself now. Darian and I sadly could not meet up again before today's episode. So I'm taking the reins. I'm going solo. Okay. In this episode, we're going to take a quick look back at some of what we think are the greatest moments that we had um, on the podcast. Uh, we're picking from guests that we've had in the past. Uh, some of our best short segments that we've recently started to produce. And yeah, so let's just have some fun, all right? So sit tight, hop into the Red Pegasus time machine with me, all right? And now we are about to head out and listen to this crazy but probably delicious concoction that one of our uh, special guests, Aaron Kozak, came up with. Let's roll the clip. So I have a similar with the Cheez-Its. It's actually uh, Cheez-Its with salsa. Ooh, okay. okay. I could see that. A good spicy salsa. Yeah. You got a cheesy chip. Yeah. I could see salsa. that. Sounds I might have to a lot do of people, that next time. Yeah. yeah. You know, find your favorite salsa. I was about to ask, do you have a specific salsa in mind? Yeah, yeah you got to go with the fresh uh, salsa from H-E-B. Oh, fresh right. salsa from H-E-B. H-E-B. Medium, H-E-B. medium H-E-B. spice. If medium only, spice. If only yeah. I knew, though, because there's no H-E-B in Dallas. So. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Hey, they're coming. Yeah, they're coming. They're coming quick. Now, don't knock it till you try it, folks, okay? Don't lie. I know a lot of you guys are probably trying to find some Cheez-Its, some salsa, right now or later on to try and figure out this snack. Let us know how it tastes, okay? Um, so, what about that one time? Let's go back just a few episodes ago. We actually came in contact with alien life. I know. Crazy. It's also crazy what they jam out to in space. So they think that it's powerful jets that have caused that, or it could be the result of a starburst shock wave triggered by the birth of stars in a galaxy. (laughs) A whole bunch of craziness, and of course, we still don't know what's going on. And, uh, yeah, hold on. Uh, do you you hear that? Getting a little static. Hey, hold on. Are we making making contact with alien life? Oh no. I'm ready to make an entrance so back on up. Oh man, I mean, who would have thought aliens listening to Dr. Dre and Snoop Dogg like that? I mean, come on. Jeez. Um, what about this part uh, when we're talking about live music that's coming up and we discovered that Darien was the front man for One Republic? What? Uh, One Republic's going to be at Dos Equis Pavilion. One Republic, dude. <laughs> I didn't dude, even know they were still writing it's music. It's been a long while. <laughs> For real. Uh, One Republic, they did the, uh, what is it called? What was that song called that they did? Oh, they have a few songs that they did. Martin. Yeah, they did do. I know that. <laughs> but what's the one that like... Yeah, I know what you're talking about. The, they had one big one. Yeah, like everyone knows it. All the right moves. Is that the one? Oh, I think, oh, I'm thinking of the Counting Stars one. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Lately, I've been <laughs> yeah, just like that. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Just like that. Just like that. Oh. Are you, are you the front man for that band? <laughs> oh, maybe. <laughs> Listen, I'm accepting cash for anyone who wants an autograph. Okay, just putting that out there. Just putting that out there. Um, what about this one time when we're talking uh, with one of our guests, Preston Osborne, owner of Crossbar Soccer and Beer over in Richardson. Once again, shout out to them. Always hosting us, just having a good time. Uh, drinks, soccer, uh, soccer leagues, F1. You can rent out the field. You got Tom there with his vintage jersey store. I mean, they've got probably just about everything. They have video games there, okay? Go check them out. Crossbar Soccer and Beer over in Richardson. Give them a shout out. Let them know that 
you came from the podcast and you can use code Pegasus if you're trying to get free pickup. I mean, come on. What isn't this place offering you at this point? Um, but anyway, so we're talking with uh, Preston and he's trying to tell us how different it is uh, when it comes to watching sport like soccer and how the announcers can really make a big difference. He even references a little Simpsons episode there for some of you Simpson fans. Check it out. There's so much just to watching soccer in general that people forget oftentimes like with the back line. So. Yeah, well, yeah. people, you know, people are like, well, it's not like basketball where, you know, you yeah. score every 13 seconds. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, that's true. It's a low scoring game, but there is always something going on to watch. Like Absolutely. The, the way the game's flowing and the back line is changing and, you know, they're, you'll see a, a good team completely change their tactics on the fly mm -hmm. against an opponent that's got them figured out. So it, it's hard to get into that, but once you're into it, it's pretty cool. It's the same with, you know, people who watch hockey and they know all the nuance to it. I yep. mean, there's, there's some crazy stuff those guys do that I'm just like, they're whacking a, a puck with a yeah. stick, right? And, I'll, you know, I've got a friend who's really into hockey and he'll be like, dude, shut up. Here's what just happened. I'm like, <laughs> oh, wow, I had no idea. <laughs> yeah, right. So it's, yeah, it's got to have a love for the sport and then you can see a lot more to it. Yeah, I'll, like, I'll be glued to the TV just watching a soccer match and my wife will look at me and like, what are you even watching? They're just <laughs> passing back and forth. I'm like... <laughs> I will say too, the announcers help that as well. Yeah. Like, yeah. like so Tony Romo, right, commenting on football. Yep. He'll be like, "Well, this is what's happening, and here's what's about to happen." Yep. You're like, "Oh my god, okay!" And it makes exactly. it so much cooler. Good announcers can really make the game more enjoyable. There's mm -hmm. a hilarious Simpsons bit uh, where they've got uh, an American announcer and someone who's clearly like a, a Mexican announcer, <laughs> um, and the the American announcer is like, "Half back passes to the center, back to the wing, back to the center." Center holds it, holds it, holds it. Halfback passes to center, back to wing, back to center. Center holds it, holds it, holds it. And you're like, okay, I, there's some truth to it. They're making yep. fun of you, but I'm like, yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, that's yep. funny. That was uh, a really great episode, a really great interview that we had with Preston. We're going to have to get him back on. Remember, go check him out. Go check out Crossbar Soccer and Beer. Go check out that episode with him. It was a great time, and of course, who doesn't love a Simpsons reference? Come on now. Uh, this next clip that we're going to check out is with our boy Lewis, a childhood friend of Darian and I, and uh, we gave him a call after multiple calls to people. No one wanted to answer our phone calls, but Lewis did. He came in the clutch. This is when we're talking about our uh, Texas City's bracket. We're trying to figure out what Texas City is the best. We were stuck. Darian chose one city, I chose the other, and Lewis came in the clutch. Let's see who he chose to advance. I think maybe since, you know, kind of in the studio by ourselves, no one's really around. Yep. Imagine that. Uh, so how about we do a little lifeline, yeah? Okay. We just uh, maybe call somebody. That's a good idea. Out of the blue. Yeah. No one knows that we're doing this, by the no way. They're just going to hopefully answer <laughs> us, yeah. and uh, we'll see what they say. Yeah, let's give it a shot. All right. One eternity later. All right, so we got Lewis. Okay. Our boy Lewis from uh, from school, hometown. Yeah. Hometown G. Yep. Uh, <laughs> so we caught and gave him a call. He was like, you know what? All right. I got you. I got you. So... Lewis, let me explain this uh, once again. We're doing Texas uh, March Madness edition. What do you think? You, do you prefer Houston over Amarillo or what? I'll say Houston because there's no Cinderella story on this one. Oh, <laughs> oh no Cinderella <laughs> okay, story yeah. on this one. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I, I respect it. I respect it. All right. All right. Appreciate it, Lewis, for the tiebreaker. Perfect. Yo, this dude, Lewis, was ruthless. Dude, for real. <laughs> He, he said no Cinderella story whatsoever. Straight up. All right, Houston moves on. Elite Eight. Houston moves on. I don't have the list, so you're going to have to Yeah, go I got over. you. Next up we have here um, is the number nine seed Plano mm. versus the number eight seed Corpus Christi. Now, if you're going to want to know who advances from that bracket, you're going to have to listen to that episode, Top Texas Cities, Texas Bracket. Just go check it out. I'm telling you, we've had such a good time on this podcast. I cannot believe we've done so many episodes um, Darian and I just keep coming back and we just, we love doing this. And so we hope that you guys love doing this as well. Um, how about this? I, we were listening to snacks earlier, but how about we go back to snacks again? This is when we have another guest in the studio, Chris Oblaza. He is a photographer in the DFW area and he's just first off amazing. Second, him and his wife, they have this, uh, little Instagram account, the donut ambassador. 
they go out to local donut shops here and there and they review some donuts. His, I'm not a donut person, okay, but his photos of these donuts, I mean, it makes me want a donut every time. Let's check it out who he or the donut ambassador herself chose as the top three donut spots and the top three donuts. Let's roll the clip. I texted you beforehand. Give me your top three places. Yep. And top three donuts mm -hmm. from each of those places. Well, not nine total donuts, but I gave you like give me a donut from each of those places that you like. So um, we wanted to try them on the show, but one they were either too far or two they were already closed and we you know we wouldn't be able to eat yeah. them fresh. Yeah, donut places closed really early. Yeah. 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 That's why for us it's like a a weekend thing. So go ahead and shout them out and uh, tell us what your donut or what. Aaron's go-to donut is because you know yeah. you don't really like donuts. All right, so this uh, is yes. straight from the ambassador herself. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hold on. So, need some music or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the her number one for I think for both of us probably is a place called Detour Donuts. Um, this is this is our our local shop because it's closest to us. Um, for for those of you guys down in Dallas or in in like in that are farther south, it's uh, it's going to be a little bit of a hike, but I can I can assure you it's worth it as a special trip. Mm. Definitely at least go out there once. You know, take the take the trip out there and uh, and get you know get a couple of flavors. You do have to get there early to get the good flavors. Um, they're going to have stuff all day, but like the really really popular ones go fast, mm -hmm. so you got to get out there early. The the her favorite one from Detour, um, she said she couldn't pick one because there's so many good ones. But uh, they have a monthly rotating menu, which is really cool. Oh okay, yeah. 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 So you get like different uh, different flavors every month, um, and but this month, it one the the best one or the one you should probably go out and try is this dark chocolate passion fruit. Okay. And so, the, and I've had this one, and I'll tell you what: if you if you're into dark chocolate, like it's good. But the passion fruit filling that she makes, like Ooh. you know, she hand makes all this stuff. Yeah. Um. It it's it's so good, man. She sells the passion fruit curd in like as a separate like jar. <laughs> yep. uh, when, smart, when, yeah. When yeah, at the end of the month or whatever. I don't, I don't. She she has before. So nice. Um, man, it's a good one. So definitely go try try that one out. Um, and it, and that's coming from someone who doesn't like donuts, right? Who doesn't <laughs> right. like sweets that much. I, I thought it was really good. So there's that, uh, one that's, that's in Dallas. It's at, um, Bishop Arts is nice. the salty donut. Have you guys ever had salty donut? I haven't. Um, they're huge. Really? I think so. Yeah. yeah. It sounds familiar. Yeah. There's some co cool photo ops out there too. They, they have like some, some nice art out there and like a nice little sitting area. Um, but the salty donuts, it's good. It's uh, her recommendation for out there is the brown butter and salt. Brown um, butter it's, and she said salt. it's the most perfect and simple combo. Okay, yeah. nice. I would never think to order that, so I'll take your recommendation yeah. on that. Yeah, go check it out. Yeah. Um, you know, and then walk around Bishop Arts is absolutely nice area sweet too. area. Yeah. Um, and then lastly, third option here. The number three is called Twinkle Donuts. Um. And that's that's actually in the colony, uh, okay. off of 121 and Farm to Market. So okay. it's it is it's also a little farther north uh, of Dallas proper, but um, they they have some really great flavors. I can say that from experience. Yeah, um, they have some really unique and and good flavors. If you like um, like lemon flavor things, they have really good really good stuff. Um, hers is. She said that they they have the best cake donuts she's ever had. That's all she mm, said about cake that. Cake donuts go hard. Yeah. I'm yeah. not a I'm not yeah. a donut person either. I'll usually just go plain chocolate or uh, that blueberry cake. Yeah. Oof. The best one. So I've actually had one from Twinkle that I remember. Um, and now I'm just like contradicting myself completely. Like I don't like donuts, <laughs> but I've had all these donuts now that like we we go do this thing. Yeah. Um, it's an acquired taste now. Yeah. But uh. But they have a cake donut that's a blueberry cake donut mm -hmm. with a lemon icing on on it, and that man, it tastes really good. I it's want really a donut good. now, man. Yeah, I know. I'm Mouth sorry. Man. Swattering in this room. <laughs> mm -mm -mm. Gosh, do I want a donut right now? Seriously, go give them a follow. Donuts, period. Ambassador, 
that's their donut account where they're uh, constantly posting pictures of donuts and trying out different donuts from around the DFW area. Check out Chris Ablaza, C Ablaza, at all one word on Instagram. Check out some of the amazing photos he's taken around the DFW area. I mean, you need to listen to his episode if you're a photographer specifically because he can give you a whole bunch of tips and tricks, especially out there in the DFW area. Maybe some hot spots. Who, who knows? Who knows? Uh, but yeah, definitely check that out. Go give both the Donut Ambassador and Sia Blaza a follow. Um, we're coming up on our last clip here. Marry, date, and kill. I believe this is when we're talking about marrying, killing, or dating music, movies, and TV shows. Yeah, this was kind of hard. Not gonna lie. Roll the clip. All right, so marry, date, kill, music, <laughs> movies, or TV shows. Or, yeah, yeah. Woof. Man, this one is hard. This is really hard. Um, Ten years ago, I would have killed TV shows, but man, they're just like, that's what's in now. Yeah. You watch TV shows more than movies probably nowadays. Yeah, I think I'm going to go marry music. Definitely need the music in my life. The musica. Yep. For date, I'm probably going to go with TV shows. Okay. And I'll probably kill movies. Yo, that's crazy. Um, why? Do you have the same? No. Oh. <laughs> that's crazy. The only reason I say that is because TV shows, you can usually get a variety of. Yeah. You know, movies are, you're always going to watch the same uh, two hour movie. That's but true. with an episode, with TV shows, like for instance, I watch Seinfeld. So I have, what, uh, 13 seasons or something like that to go yeah. through. That's a lot of content. Just kill it. Is. Yeah. So sure. I, I think. Just be content wise, I would go TV shows, date TV shows, and kill movies. What I like you? the perspective. I would, I would too. Marry music, absolutely, no doubt about it. Have to. That's part of it, my everyday life. But I would date movies, just because there are so many movies. movies out there that I that I couldn't get rid of. I just can't. That's true. There There's are so many movies. movies out there. <laughs> There's so many movies I just can't kill off <laughs> for the rest of my life. And I would kill TV shows. Kill yeah. TV shows. This is coming from the dude who has been in love with Yellowstone and 1883. <laughs> just has not suggested. I don't even think has suggested a movie. All he suggested has That's been so TV true. shows. And he said he's going to get rid of this. Oh, no. Nine That's seasons so of Seinfeld. Sorry. I, gotcha. I thought it was a little bit shorter than that. Um, so true. I'm this close to being a cowboy. <laughs> so, saying that. Seriously, though, Darian is really close to becoming a cowboy. Not going to lie. And if you haven't seen Yellowstone yet, what are you doing? Come on, we've mentioned it on the show several times. I'm sure you've heard it on the internet and read about it on the internet several times. Just join the club, okay? You're missing out. I'm trying to help you out here. All right, I lied to you earlier. That wasn't our last clip. I actually found one more. This is uh, when Darian and I are talking, or actually probably Darian because it is sports related. I'm um, talking about the U.S. men's national team finally getting into the World Cup yet again. And you might be saying to yourself, oh, man, the World Cup, that's November 21st. Where can I watch the World Cup? Where can I watch the U.S. men's national team? Um, hello? Have you not been listening? Crossbar, soccer and beer in Richardson, just north of Dallas. Give them a follow, crossbar.dallas on Instagram and TikTok. I'm sure they'll keep you updated. And you already know that we're going to keep you updated as well. So let's listen to this clip and then we'll finally roll out of here. I'm actually not going to interrupt anymore. So you guys have a great weekend. Thank you for working with us with this um, accidental deletion of the original episode that was supposed to premiere today. But it's all right. We'll re-record it and we'll premiere it next week. Give us a follow on Instagram, uh, Twitter, Facebook, at Red Pegasus Pod. Um, send us an email if you want to leave us a review five stars only and then lastly of course we do have some merch on our store you can hit the link tree in just about all of our social media bios and it'll take you there all right seriously i'm out of here love you guys thank you guys for everything and have a great weekend the usa men's national team has officially qualified for the 2022 world cup in qatar there you go we are back that's what we like to hear where's the applause where's the applause <laughs> so yes the world cup starts in november this year which is weird it's usually in the summer right so it's gonna be kicking off right around thanksgiving this year but um, that's because of qatar's uh yeah, super hot like super weird climate right yes. it's so hot Yes, 
They physically could not do it there in the summer. <laughs> so they pushed it back a few months and we'll be starting kicking off November 21st. Dang. And ending like December 18th. So it's like a Thanksgiving Christmas <laughs> gift to us all. <laughs> nice. Uh, World Cup 2022 in Qatar. And the USA has qualified for it. Unlike they did the last World Cup. So mm. it'd be nice to have them back in the swing of things. We're making up for lost time. Absolutely. So hopefully they make some noise there. They're qualified. They're in. Go team go. <laughs>